Hi! Welcome to the first episode of Design Hander. Um, I'm Amber and uh, just I'm so excited to do this. Um, so for today's episode I'm going to kind of start off by saying how this all happened, who I am, what I do, um, and then kind of like step you through uh, the process the first process. So this will be like a three to four part series, uh, redesigning a character sheet and just kind to showcase my approach to designing. So first off, let's start about how this even came to be. So I met Daniel Fox about, it was last Gen Con. Um, and we kind of got to talk a little bit about Zwahinder and then what I do for a living, what he does for a living. And then I got a play Zwahinder, and then there was a whole talk of, oh yeah, I, and then I also put out a three-part article about designing better character sheets, which you can find on my website, rocketorca.com, talking about my approach. Um, and then Daniel asked me if I would be willing to take a look at the Zwahinder print character sheet, uh, take a stab at re redesigning it uh, with user experience in mind, and then also asked would I be willing to stream it for uh, all the stuff that's happening in March with the Zwahinder RPG Twitch. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'm more than happy to. I think more people should uh, learn a little bit about design and making user friendly so people can play your RPGs, have a good experience with it, um, and how design, uh, graphic design, user experience can really lift your RPG experience. So that's how this show came to be. So three to four, uh, three to four shows potentially just based on how long it might take me to actually go through the whole process. So a little bit about me. I'm Amber, uh, also known as Rocket Orca on Twitter um, and pretty much everywhere on social media. Um, I have a associate's degree in visual communication, a bachelor's degree in graphic design, um, and let's, see, oh yeah, my master's degree in instructional design and technology, and then also I'm user experience through Nielsen Norman Group, user experience certified through Nielsen Norman Group. Um, and then I have been doing graphic design work for 12 years now. Um, prior to the pandemic and being furloughed, uh, my position um, at my job that I've been at for nine years was a manager of graphics and instructions for consumer products, specifically juvenile products. And my team focused on the actual instruction manuals and labeling for products. Um, and when I say focus, we did everything for the instruction manuals. So, or we still do all, everything for the instruction manuals for multiple products. Um, and that includes like actually working with R and D, um, participating in user experience research, uh, going over consumer satisfaction indexes and um, surveys, uh, reading anecdotal experiences, uh, any sort of 
uh, surveys or polls that consumers did. We also spoke a lot with a consumer care group. Um, we work on, we work with prototypes with the engineers. We actually uh, try to um, use the product like a consumer would. And then we actually write the instruction manual, take photos, do the illustrations, put that all together and um, make the instruction manual and work with vendors and everything. So that's what my background is, my history um, in graphic design user experience. Um, and of course, in my job, I've been trying to improve that with instruction manuals because there is a sort of like, what do you call it? Mentality towards instruction manuals, I suppose, that like no one ever reads them, no one uses them. But I think it's when people think about it in like, like reading a book, like nobody's reading an instruction manual. I mean, some people do, I don't want to say nobody does, but most people don't approach instruction manuals um, like a novel. You're not going to read it from cover to cover. You're going to be um, looking at instruction manuals as a sort of a reference tool, right? And I say that in my in, in instruction, uh, um, my character street design blog series of articles, I talk about how, you know, character sheets are kind of like that in dungeon, uh, the DMG, any sort of handbook or any RPG material is a reference piece. Yes, there are people who read them cover to cover. That's good. But most people, and I'm bucketing myself in there, usually are only going to look up stuff as they need it. And same with character sheets. Um, and what I've been doing at my work and now what I've been applying to um, my RPG stuff is that kind of attitude of let's think about the user, let's think about how they're going to approach it, um, let's think about how things are organized, think about how things are visually structured, and how can I take all of this brain stuff I know, good stuff, everything I've learned for 10 years and then start applying it to uh, my hobby stuff. Um, and that's what we're going to be kind of doing, um, today. So I will just say right now, like I have chat up and I will, um, take a look and ask questions along the way. I might not get it right away, get to it right away, but I'm more than happy to stop and, 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 um, answer any questions you guys might have. Um, but to talk about what I'm going to do today, specifically, I have not used the print character sheet at all, and I haven't even looked at it prior to this uh, stream. I mean, I did look at it when I had it printed out earlier, but I have not used it at all. I've just used the Roll20's character sheet. I've never had to actually fill out a Zwahinder character sheet. So I'm trying to recreate that first time user experience. I'm going to actually try to use the print character sheet on stream. I have this set up. I'm sure you guys can kind of see this. <laughs> Oops. Oh, no. I probably messed it up now. But I had to set up some weird <laughs> uh, uh, camera stuff so I can actually show you what I'm going to be doing um, print wise. And I apologize uh, for maybe the camera quality and stuff. Um, it might be a little bit blown out, but I'm going to try and actually do this like a first time person ever experiencing using a character sheet. And to top it off, I'm actually very tired today, <laughs> kind of stressed out, and that's fine because when we do stuff with design, you kind of want to be in that headset of, I want to design this to be very easy for anybody. I'm not going to design it for somebody who is like mentally 100% on or, um, you know, we don't know what people's mental th state is going to be even when they sit down for the first time to look at something. So I kind of like that idea that I'm already kind of like mentally, plus I'm trying to be on right now and talk through it. So I might be a little distracted too. That's pretty good. Like that's good for design. Can I find stuff even when I'm distracted, when I'm trying to talk, when I'm tired? There we go. I lost my headset turned off for a second. But yeah, I'm trying to recreate, recreate a pretty realistic situation trying to use this character sheet. Um, and I'll talk about visual stuff too and, and things along the way. So that being said, I am going to switch over to see if this works. If I bumped my camera, I'll have to redo it. Oh, okay. Here we go. 
Sweet. And you can see my cool keyboard too. So um, first impressions. I printed this out from the, uh, I want to say the player's handbook. Um, I printed it out. I really liked that we had two different versions. Um, we have the hot dog hamburger, right? Portrait landscape. Um, that's really cool. People have asked me before, like, is there a preferred or better, um, like, which one's better? And honestly, like, I think that's just preference. Like, that's completely up to who you are as a person, whether you um, like the vertical portrait or the landscape. I think maybe some games might make more sense to have it a horizontal just because of how information is bro broken out. Um, but yeah, I think it's all just about uh, uh, preference. I don't think it, it really affects the overall design um, generally. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm just going to go through it real quick. Just kind of look at what's here. I did not, ha I did not have the capabilities to print front to back. Um, which in some cases is actually fine because sometimes when you think about how people are going to be using your, your character sheet, right, they're going to be printing at home and they're going to be using just like normal computer paper. If, if what you print front to back has a lot of black, you know, maybe the bleed through will be bad. So, so I like that I didn't actually print, um, front to back, but I don't think this character sheet would have issues with it really, honestly, because like first look, it's actually not, um, very like overwhelming like knowing the kind of game that Zwahinder is and how much there is to it this is actually not like first glance I'm not like terrified there's a lot going on obviously but I like the thinness of the lines like I like how these lines are very light um overall I think I like that it's not uh doesn't have a lot of um of uh Ex, like decorate decorative stuff on it um i know that the actual player's handbook and stuff has uh like a really cool borders and things but those are actually nice to not have on the character sheet i think it's i think sometimes we're tempted to put a lot of like bells and whistles and pretty aesthetic stuff on it but i personally like this because one of those things I, um, I talk about a lot is how our brains process information. So uh, there's a term called cognitive load and it's, it's, it's used to describe how our brains um, process information and the more information there is, the heavier the load is and the more you know, it takes a hard, hard for you to, to process information when there's just so much coming at you, right? Um, and one of those things, um, uh, is those those big blocks of decorative stuff if it's not really doesn't really support or add and it's just there um, they actually call it seductive details in um, instructional design uh, learning people want to add like cool animated stuff or things to support learning but usually what ends up happening is people are distracted from what they should be paying attention to and instead are visually being pulled to the other aesthetic thing. So I really like that this doesn't have too much um, extras and it's very light. Um, first off, it's I printed this out. I don't know if it's my toner's problem, but I'm sure you guys can see here too that um, this, well, if I can bring it up closer, fate point corruption. I like that they're using a contrast color, but it's very light. Um, and my printer did not do a good job of printing out I can actually see the dots and it's kind of ghost-like and it would probably be very hard to see in a dark area um, but you know maybe this is and also you can tell like some of these are very small font sizes um, even now I'm having to bring it a little bit closer to my face to read um, so yeah those are my first impressions I think I also really appreciate that they have different um, pages. They didn't try to cram combat onto this first page. 
So whoever did the, f the design to begin with, I mean, it's really good, like, as it is right now, um, just from initial glance. Now, I say that from an initial, like, graphic design vis based on a visual alone. Whoops, am I hitting stuff? Whoops. Um, but I, in order to know, like, from a user experience perspective, I would actually have to start using this to see. And I might not actually use or, you know, play the character or try to use it. I have some of that experience playing Zwahinder. Um, and I know what my experience is like using the Roll20 uh, character sheet. Um, so maybe this is actually, you know, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, like, I really, really, honestly, I, I, play, I play a magic caster in Zwahinder. So this is really nice to see it even again. Like, even though there's difficulty rating here, you think that'd be a six, six, um, um, that would be, like, sufficient to have it on one page? And I'm sorry if my camera keeps focusing and unfocusing. Whoops. Calm down, camera. Okay. So, I like that they have it both twice, so I don't have to keep flipping back and forth. I apologize for this camera's focus. Auto-focusing. Okay. We gonna be okay, camera? We gonna be cool? Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I really do like that this is here again, just because, and the channel power is really nice right here. Gosh, I like this magic. I love separate magic sheets for magic players. This is, this is honestly like, yes. The only thing is I don't see a place where I say, oh, magic, here it is. This is where I would list out my spells. I might actually probably would split maybe the spells because and also the regents i mean do we need all of this space for the regents i'm not sure interesting uh regents regents and this is the advances gotcha and then back to the combat profile cool okay i think I think I'm I think I'm I think I'm ready to start actually putting a character together. Um I got my percentile. Um so you guys can help me make a character. Let's make a character together and let's actually fill out the sheet. Because yeah, like a big thing too is just like seeing how people actually fill stuff out, right? Okay, so let's make a character. Bring up my character creation. I have it up on my um, screen. I need to roll for my primary attributes. I begin at basic tier. Um, okay, so another thing I want to say real quick. I've only made a character once. I would not say that I'm very adept at Swider. <laughs> I, um, so what I'm saying is bear with me as I make this character. We're going to pretend that I've never really done this before anyway, so it's actually kind of good. But if you want to help me along the way, please help me along the way. I welcome it. Um, so, okay. We're basic. I'm going to roll for primary attributes. So we will start with... So I have to start here. It'd be interesting to see if there was a way to make the step order for how to make character creation correlate with the actual or like follow the actual um step on the sheet as well because right now like i want to start here like this is where i want to start filling stuff out at but the step in the books is telling me to instead go here first because this is where i'm going to fill in my attributes um so that's interesting. Maybe maybe we can revisit that when I start to do framework. Because hopefully by the end of this character creation process, I'll have a better understanding of how this flow is supposed to be. And then we can kind of make a basic framework to start with. That's that that's how I will probably hopefully end this uh this episode. And once we have a framework, then the next episode will be actually taking it into the digital realm and working on it from there. Uh, and then, of course, printing it out, trying the digital one, printing it out, doing it again, and yada, yada, yada. So, okay. So, here I am. First, well, step two is primary attributes. Step one being your basic tier. 
Um, so if I'm like the user and I'm trying to think about what that means, is there a place where I mark my tier at on here? I'm just playing devil's advocate. Like I'm first time sitting down, never done this before. Is there a place where I'm supposed to mark what tier I'm at? Cause that's step one, right? I start at basic. So I'm, I'm, I'm just now scanning. That's the magic one. Nope. I don't care about that. And nope, I don't want that. Okay. Here's advances. Okay. So here's basic. Okay. So here's basic. I don't have to mark anything, but here's where my basic is. I might want to put basic tier maybe here in the header because I don't know. I have to play devil's advocate, right? Like you say in the man in the manual, I'm talking like I'm a uh, at work. Um, if you say basic tier in the in the care in the book, but I don't see that same word anywhere, that same set of words anywhere else, I might get lost. And I'm already on step one, so you know. But again, did I even read? I just saw step one basic tier. I didn't read through this. Each tier has a certain amount of requirements. Character must fulfill before moving on to a new tier. Uh, for now, go to the first page of the character sheet and record basic tier. Okay. So, first page of the character sheet. Where do I record basic tier? Um, first page of the character sheet. Where do I record basic tier? So... Intermediate, advanced, pro. Can you guys see that? Basic, pro, intermediate. But it says pro. That's supposed to be profession. Oh, basic profession. So I don't have a place to like tick off basic thing, but this is where my basic profession would go. I didn't understand what pro meant either. So pro... And I'm doing this again to showcase how people can be confused. Like it's, it's what you think might make sense to you because you're the designer. You've been designing this this entire time and you've been in it, steeped in it. Like the same for me. Like I, you know, when I talk about a juvenile product and I call it a CRS and anybody outside of my line of work is like, what the heck do you mean by CRS? What does CRS mean? I'm like, oh, sorry, child restraint system. So car seat is like all these layers, right? And even something as simple as basic pro, like you would think people would get it. You can't, you have to think that you have to really put yourself in that position of someone who has absolutely no idea of what the heck um, you're talking about. <laughs> Cause again, so already, I don't know where I'm supposed to mark, um, record that I have basic tier. I don't see the word basic tier. Um, so I guess what I'll do, because I'm a user, I'm going to pretend that no one's really, I'm, I'm going to pretend that no one's helping me, like, at all, period. Like, I'm making a character in the void of, I, my GM decided that they aren't really going to help me because whatever but I'm just alone in a void trying to figure this out myself. So, all right, I'm basic tier. I'm going to circle this. That's where I'm at right now. Okay, step two. Um, step two, primary attributes. So I got to roll my primary attributes. Um, these bonuses are equal to the big tens. Got it, cool. Each attribute, okay, cool. So... I need to roll these. My um, red is the 10. Okay. They may be modified. It's, things will be affected by this or later on, but I need to apply it now. Okay, let's go ahead and do combat. Uh, <laughs> uh, I said my red was my 10s, so... Uh, 61. 
And I think I put that, I put this in the big zero, right? Because this is supposed to be my, my CB is the bonus. So if my character has a brawn of 37, they would have a BB of 3. So my combat bonus is 61, and that means my CB would be 6. Okay, not bad. I like the size of the boxes and the circles. They're, I think they're very sufficient um, in size. Okay, I'm just trying to make my camera stop auto-focusing. Okay, 61. Dang. Uh, 31 for my brawn. So, 3 BB. My agility is 55. I don't know about you guys, but I would really love making characters. Think of stupid names for this character. We're going to be silly. Perception, 23. So my PB is 2. Uh, 48. Intelligence. I'm not very perceptive. Uh, so this is 4. My willpower. Whoa, my God! An 82! Holy moly! Dang! Let me be the worst at fellowship. Okay, 31. So, so yeah. Yeah. That wasn't bad. Um, care the box sizes are interesting. I wonder what this small box is for. I guess I'll figure out that out later. Again, I don't have experience uh, with this with this print character sheet. I only have experience with the 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 roll twenty version. So, God, yeah, these are really good. Uh, combat sixty one, agility fifty five, eighty two willpower. My god. Doing good. Uh, okay, so the next step is to... Let me look. Next step would be... Determine sex, I guess? Where's step three? So I'm looking through the book. This is all... Step three. Sex and ancestry. Determine your sex. Um, I'm just going to make this based off of me. Because it's easiest. So I guess I'll write down uh, female. Okay. So again, it's it's interesting. Like, I had to go here, here, then here. Okay. And then we'll do our ancestry. If I get ogre, it's going to be hilarious. I did not get ogre. I got, oops, sorry. That was a 25. 25 is a, I got an elf. <laughs> I'll stick with it. Oh, yeah. And then also it's, 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 you determine your sex and then your ancestry. So again, it's the female and then I have to put it my ancestry okay it's uh, the reason why i'm pointing this out so much right now just to give you guys an idea of where i'm at i just had to do for work uh about two months ago uh i made a quick start guide uh and we did labels that had to that kind of correlated with the quick start guide and it was one of those things that everybody i want to say we had 25 participants who are trying to follow the quick start guide and the corresponding labels. And if the labels and the, the steps in the labels did not match those steps in the quick guide, we had a lot of people get confused and go, huh, is this right? Is this, is this, I mean, that's what the product, but it was still just like one of those things where it was funny how people picked up on that. Like they were like, oh, I'm doing this kind of in a weird ish order. Um, okay, so we got an elf, and that's, and, and again, that's, I'm bringing that up because it's just something that's in the, in my mind right now, but anyway, we have an elf. Do elves do anything? Um, let's look at an elf. I don't have this up on screen, you have to, I'm looking at the, um, the, the player's handbook right now. So, elf ancestral modifiers. So my, I have a minus, is that where that little box is supposed to be for? 
my ancestral modifier, these little boxes up top here? I'm going to say yes, because I don't know, and because I'm in a void by myself, and there's a box available to me, and I know that I'm going to have stuff that is going to affect, I think I'm going to just use that box to do that. So my AB gets a plus two, my agility goes up to plus two. Uh, oh, oops, excuse me, whoop, I'm overpowering that, nope, excuse me, plus one, because I'm an elf. Uh, my PB gets a plus one. My intelligence gets a plus one. My brawn gets a minus one. Oh my gosh. Ouch. <laughs> uh, my fellowship is a minus one. Yeah, no one wants to be friends with an elf. Uh, willpower... Minus one. This is not a friendly elf. This is a, a frail elf. And then my willpower. Okay, got it. Okay. Got No, combat. There was nothing to combat. Okay, no combat modifier. All right, let's see what my ancestral trait is. Is that what I'm supposed to do next? I'm guessing so. Um, roll for ancestry. Ancestral modifiers. Roll for ancestral traits. So here's another thing that um, I did when I first made Zwa, uh, first made my first character. I actually took all of the steps in the book and I actually made a checklist for myself um, in a Google Doc so that way I, I could I wouldn't have to go back and forth. So like right now I was almost gonna go and scroll back up to see where I am at in step three. Um, but um, I have my cheat sheet on Google Docs up, so I'm going to use that. So yes, I do roll for my ancestral trait now. I got rolled an 88, which means I have night eyes. I immediately saw where traits were at. Uh, so I have night eyes. But it doesn't say ancestral traits, it just says um, traits. I'm assuming you get other traits, but this is my ancestral one, night eyes. What does Night Eyes give me? Okay, so it's Dark dark Vision, essentially, right? Uh, so, see in dark. If, as long as there is starlight or moonlight. Okay, cool. So then my next thing I need to do is roll for Archetype. So I'll scroll through, get through all this. Halflings, ogre, orcs. Okay, archetype. Um, all right, roll D100. Yet again. 29. I am the archetype of a commoner. So where do I put archetype at? Archetype. Archetype? Archetype. Nah. Uh, nope. 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 I don't see a place to put archetype. Do I put that somewhere? I must, because I had to roll for it. So, age group, ancestry, sex, blah, pronoun, height, weight, build, type, connection, first name, pronoun, social class, first name, pronoun, drawback, umbrella, season of birth, primary attributes, drawbacks, story, fate points, archetype. Is it in talents? Am I missing a page? Am I missing a page? There should be four pages, right? Or am I missing, like, talents and trappings? Did I not print out all these pages? Oh, there's trappings. There's talents. Injuries. Initiative. So, I could be that I'm not seeing it, and it's there somewhere, or it's not there. But in any case, this would be a part in a person's trying to figure stuff out. Where do I, where do I put something? Like, you said to put, I had a role for an archetype, record, once you do your archetype, 
go to your, okay, archetype profession. So do I do this on my profession? Do I mark this on my profession? Because I'm going to have trappings. Okay. I'm going to look at chat and see if they're helping me out at all. Uh, yeah. So I, okay. I, I'm not sure. So I'm going to write down archetype. Because... I don't know where that's at, but I'm common. I'm a commoner. Okay, so I'm a commoner. We'll refer to that later. Write in your profession on the first page of your character sheet. Okay, so my profession, I'm guessing, is here. Um, okay, so I do... I do my profession. Uh, I'm a commoner, and so I have to roll on the commoner professions... I got a 42, which means I'm a coachman. So I'm going to put coachman here, I guess. Coachman. Uh, and that means I need to do my trappings, which I guess goes here. So bandages. I'm going to put band-aids. <laughs> no, I should probably put bandages. I want to be consistent with the, the the game. Bandages three, nice. Bottle bomb, hell yeah. Grave root, holy symbol, leather sandals, yeah. He or heavy boots. Eh, we're gonna go with sandals. I wrote it down. I'm not going back. Rucksack. Uh, shiv, heck yeah, simple attire, just a simple coachman, um, warm vest, and I get to choose something, warm vest, and I get to choose shepherd sling with sling stones, or splitting maul, or threshing flail, isn't a threshing flail just something you do out in, uh, Like you're hitting weed or something. I'm going to go with splitting mall. Because that sounds more fun. Okay. Cool. So I've got my trappings. Secondary attributes. Okay. Secondary attributes. Parallel threshold. I think... See, this is the thing uh, that um, I might need help with because I know the Roll20 character sheet just auto-generated stuff for me. Um, so I didn't have to actually do this. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Determine your base power hash by th adding 3 plus your... Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. This is my peril threshold. Is 3 plus my... Oh, I like that it's down here too. So 3 plus my... Um, holy moly... I forgot I have such a good, good, I have good elf. A very, very strong against peril elf. I need this to be this elf. <laughs> uh, so, but the minus one, so seven total. So ten. A ten. Dang. What? Even with the, even with the minus one, that's great. Okay. Um... Damage threshold um, is. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I have to do damage threshold, right? That's the next one, which is on the combat page, which makes sense. It's my BB plus. What the heck is DTH? Oh, the damage. Th yeah, okay, I remember that. But I haven't added anything to it yet. Adding BB, I don't have any armor yet. Um. So I guess I'm just going to put uh, just my BB because okay, sorry, my my cut out again. Um, I'm just gonna put my BB because I don't have any armor yet, and then I can fix that later. 
So um, that makes me wonder if it's better to do your damage thresholds later on instead of doing it now because I might get clothes later on or armor later on. I don't know. But anyway, because I don't want to forget about it. But I don't think I would because when I buy armor later on, I would have to look at the damage threshold anyway and I would have my BB already recorded. But my BB is so bad, it's two. I'm going to need to put armor. <laughs> I'm going to have to put armor on. Because um, two is not good. Encumbrance limit. So encumbrance would be con where? Where would I put that? Um, oh, here it is. It's up here. So one, three plus my BB, which is, I said, two. So five. I can only carry... I can carry... I don't know what I'm going to be able to carry. Okay. That's, that's it for that. So after encumbrance... Um, let's see. Initiative movement. See the see that's the thing is like again the roll uh, the roll twenty app completely just filled it auto generated it for me once I put stuff in. Three plus BB so initiative is on my combat probably makes sense to be on the combat. Um, three plus my um, perception which is uh, three so six, and then my movement is do I have to do movement right now? Does it ask me to do movement? Yes, it is. So one plus my agility bonus. So six, seven total. Dang. Nice. Okay, cool. And then we get to do the background. Yay. Fun part. Season of birth. One was unnamed elf born. Eleven. Spring. So uh, down here, spring. So again, we're we're not we're kind of jumping around a lot, which is not a terrible thing. I don't think is not necessarily um, the worst thing in the world, but like I think we could probably improve this. I think there's room for making it flow a little better um, with the steps that are laid out in the book. And maybe I, I mean I don't know. We'll we'll have to see when I get into this. But let's keep going. Let's get go because it's already 6:41 and I'm already. Uh, I'm getting, I'm not 100%, I don't even know where I'm at in this process. All right, uh, dooming, 49 in spring is, do not accept trust lightly. Okay, dooming is, do not accept trust lightly. All right, I'll be wary. Um, roll for my age group. Um, where is that at? Down here at the bottom of this page. Whoop, dice. We got seven. I'm young. Where do I put my age? Age. 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 Oh, up top. <laughs> all the way up the... I am a young elf. Is all the way at the top. So that's an, a moment to, to, to also take in consideration. It's like someone's like looking for something. And like the last place they just filled. And then it's up to the top again. That's something you would want to look out for in your own designs. When people are filling stuff out. Um, so young, I have no distinguishing marks. I don't have to roll for distinguishing marks. I want to though. But we're not going to. Um, complexion, let's just see, let's roll, uh, <laughs> 69, nice, light brown, complexion, light brown, hair color, wait, nope, not, that's not next, um, what's next is build type, This actually, <laughs> frail. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's so funny how when you roll these characters up, how it like ends up making sense because my brawn is minus. I have a three and a minus one, and my build type is frail. <laughs> Great, works out perfectly. 
but that means I get minus 20 to my percent to my my uh, price of stuff. Um, so height is next for an elf who is frail. I rolled a 43, so that is six foot tall. Where do I put that at? Height. Where is your height? Am I just not seeing it? Okay, here it is. Height, six foot, and weighs, uh, I think. No, wait, that's not right. Forty. Wait, no, wait. Forty-three is right. Six foot and a hundred and forty pounds. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> the elf of elf. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, jeez. Okay. Um, next up is, we got the height hair color. Where's your hair color? Here we go. I love this. This is my favorite. This is like my favorite part of Zwahander right now. It's just like, I love this random table, uh, build a character. 29 hair color for an elf. 29 golden brown. Like, and if you guys notice, like we're focusing on the character sheet right now. So I've had to uh, put golden as G L D N and brown because I am running out of space right now. Uh, how to 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 fill in uh, right. So that's something I would also look at is, uh, and I'm I'm purposely writing pretty loose to be that to be that kind of like to try to accommodate for bigger looser types of 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 handwriting. Right. Okay. So we got. The hair color, eye color is going to be 55 for an elf is crystal blue. Um, okay, so the next would be my upbringing. We got a 33, so... Um, Industrious and my favorite primary attribute is brawn. So upbringing industrious, which means brawn. So where do I mark that? Do I mark that? What does that mean really? So industrious means a lot of most people you're born into a family of hard laborers, whether they're servants, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, so upbringing. I don't remember doing this with the character I rolled to begin with. Depending on your upbringing, you'll be able to purchase focuses and specific skills for less reward points. Huh, each upbringing has a favored primary attribute. Okay, whether you attempt to purchase focuses for skills related to these primary attributes, it costs 50 report points instead of normal. I did, I don't, I didn't know that. That's, I didn't realize I did that. But also, there's no place to know um, what that means. Um, so I would want to put brawn here. You know, that's hilarious. That is a. What did this frail elf do? <laughs> just, just gets by by sheer willpower. How, I, well, I mean, I guess that's really actually really good because then I need to, <laughs> when I need to update, uh, upgrade any sort of uh, skills that require brawn, it would be less, but <laughs> okay, funny. Uh, social class. Let's see what I am. 20. Lowborn. Social class comes, before, okay, lowborn. Um, okay, I do that. I am lowborn. Uh, language. Um, I do I have to learn new languages? So I guess that's something I can talk about with my GM. I don't really have to, it's just, we just speak the local language or whatever everybody else is talking, and then we could talk about that later. But am I seeing any place to put languages? No, I don't. There's at least not on this page. Is it on anything else? No. 
don't think so. Um, okay. Languages. Uh, drawbacks? Some players like to determine their character's failings. I like that. I like having drawbacks. I think drawbacks are... Um, I like that to have in a character. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think it just adds... I like a challenge. While you're not required to select a drawback, you may optionally select one and return for an additional fate point. Yes, I will take that. What is my drawback? 98. Weak, weak, weak lungs. Okay, weak lungs it is. <laughs> Wonderful. Elf. Poor elf. Oh no. Well, good thing my peril threshold is so dang high. Weak lungs. Whenever you suffer physical peril, move one additional step down the peril condition track negatively while suffering one corruption. Cool. Um, I don't have a place to write that. Do I have a place to write my drawbacks on this? I don't see that. Oh, yep. Oh, here it is. Up top. Disorders and drawbacks. Okay, so here it is. Weak lungs. So that's another thing too in design stuff it's like things that relate to each other might be better if they are closer to each other it's like the action check action in a function of um, like a physical product if I do something to a physical product and there is some sort of indicator that shows that it's good or whatever it should be close to where that hopefully close to where that that action is so you can see the check action so the same thing happens here it's like I'm interested in like, maybe there's a way to make space for it um, down here. Also, it's interesting that there's so much room for distinguishing marks here. I rolled young, but I got no distinguishing marks whatsoever. So maybe this is something that could go with disorders and drawbacks, maybe, or something. I, I mean, there's a lot of empty space here. This is all not being used for my character specifically. So does it need to be there? Do we have to have distinguishing marks here? I'm not sure. Um, huh. Yeah, okay. I'm, thi I'm, thi I'm thinking. Uh, Squeak lungs. Um, hand of fate, record fate points. I be with one fate point, but I got a drawback, so I get two fate points, so I get a mark it here. Cool. Okay, and roll for alignment. Um, order and chaos. My order alignment and chaos alignment will be, so let's see, I rolled a 17. Compassion and melancholy. My order alignment is compassion. And my chaos alignment is melancholy. Mel, uh, I can't spell, good lord. Melon Collie. Okay. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So then I can read about that here. Um there's more to it. There's more to it. Okay. I haven't even done my profession yet. Oh my gosh. I might go over a little bit. 652 already. Um, so, name my character. Did we think of any names for this character? Uh, my frail, weak, little baby elf. Just looking in, in chat right now. What should this elf be? Uh, God, I'm terrible at names. It's like the worst thing. I wish there was like a random, uh, name generator. I could probably pull one up, but while I'm looking. Wheezy? All right, I'll take it. First one said it. Sounds like a... That's fine. Poor Wheezy. Oh, that's really good, too. Helvetica Double Dagger. I like that. A.K.A. Wheezy. I like the... I like Helvetica as a name. <laughs> the Helvetica Double Dagger. A.K.A. Wheezy. A.K.A. Ariel Cambria. <laughs> okay, so... 
we got that done. So now it's all about the profession, right? Like, um, I'm trying to think if I have a heart, should have a hard stop at seven. Um, but building the profession, I feel like it's right here, right? This is advances, right? So I got to roll for a profession. Or no, I'm a coachman. That's my basic profession. I'm a coachman. I already did that. Right? Yes. Yes, I did that. No, did I not? Yes, I did. Coachman. Okay. Let's go to the coachman page. So yeah, it feels it feels interesting, right? Like I just did a lot of work on background and stuff and now I'm rolling for my profession. I and I forgot that I did my profession. So you saw me there, right? Like, wait, didn't I, didn't I already do my profession? Did I roll for it? Oh, I did, did roll for it, but I did it almost at the beginning. Um, and here we are now step, um, let's see, step 12. Now I'm building my profession. Um, so we, cause yeah, so step six was roll for profession. And now at self, step 12, I'm doing build your profession. So it's like there's this huge disconnect right of like i i did this profession role um way back after doing and also just to break it out for you in the background even though that's step eight there is a b c d e f g h i j k l m things to do a through m things to do in background so i've went through a lot to now have to go back to build my profession so again it's all about that where one thing is in relation to the other i forgot i had really rolled and i am a coachman so let's go see what a coachman is about um <laughs> this sounds not like a great profession for little wheezy uh travel is long and arduous full of danger and foul weather <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Coachman advances. Okay. So, so let's go to coachman. So here's where I, I'm okay. So SR is skill ranks. I would not know that unless I looked at the advances thing. So it might be worth it because you have the space to put skill ranks. Um, do I list them all out? Cause I have to then tick them all off. And then I'm looking through this too. And I guess it's talents is what is. Where my coachman at? So yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Cast, okay, we don't even need the magic sheet right now. I will have to spend time with you on my own magic sheet. Or maybe I'll do it next time. Um, but yeah, like, right now, I'm trying to figure out... Wh whoops, bump my head, uh, bump my camera, sorry. Um, what to do for profession? Do I write out everything here? And then... then do stuff are these this coachman's four in hand is that a is that a talent is it is it what do i do is what i'm trying to figure out huh interesting okay since I'm almost out of time, I think this is actually a really good place to to stop um, because we already have a lot of things that I've found in just trying to do steps one through 11 that could potentially help make this character sheet a little bit more user friendly um, and everything. I think the takeaway today is that this section here should correlate and follow and correspond with the actual step step order of the the play the the character creation right like i was everywhere on the sheet you guys gotta wa watch me as i filled this in um and i'm a person who has 
a f decent amount of experience with character sheets with RPGs in general. Um, so I think I'm going to make up in my own time or maybe even on take some time to look over this a little bit more, make my notes off off stream, and then we'll pick this back up next week, go through the professions, um, quickly go through the magic, and then we'll build an actual like framework of where we want to see or where I would like to see the character sheet actually start to shape, um, build a framework there. Um, because I think today has been very enlightening. I, I hope it was enlightening for you all too to see how someone who may not have or have very little experience with interacting with your, a game and building the character, you got to see me stumble and look around and try and find out where things should go. Visually, when I first looked at this, this looks really like approachable because I think the design, the actual visual stuff, it looks great. Um, but overall, maybe there's just some organization things that, that, that need to change just to better support the actual flow of character creation. Um, I thought that was pretty enlightening. I feel pretty good about what we, what I went through as far as to help me redesign. Um, and yeah, and that's one of the, the important things is to, to actually sit and witness how someone's doing stuff. Cause that's going to inform how you organize your information. The visual stuff is usually what I worry about after I figure out how things should be organized based off of how it was written in the in the book. And sometimes if you're the designer, the writer of a game, plus you're trying to hire graphic designers at the same time, maybe what the graphic designer or, or user experience person shows you in the character sheet design could help influence maybe how you restructure your actual flow of your, your book, your actual step process for character creation or what have you in the game. Um, so yeah, um, I also, like I said, I played very much like, some of that was real. Some of that was very, very real. Like I got confused about where something went, but the other part of it, I was just playing devil's advocate. I was trying very hard to think about if somebody looks at this for, for the first time, what does SR mean? Like until I look at the book, oh, skill ranks, right? Um, basic tier. But all I saw was basic. Is that the same thing? Is basic referring to something else, something different? That's the kind of way I approach uh, when I first start doing uh, design work. I just try to get into the mindset of somebody who has no idea what's going on. So I hope that was informative. Um, we will pick this up again next Thursday, 5 p.m. Uh, Central, 6 p.m. Eastern. Um, did I say next Thursday? I hope I didn't say next Saturday. All my days are melding together. I don't know what today is. Um, but anyway, yeah, you can find me um, online at Rocket Orca on Twitter. Uh, it's where I do all of my social media posting. You can find the blog articles that I wrote about character sheet design specifically at rocketorca.com. Um, that also has my portfolio and like all the shows I'm on. I'm a co-owner of the Geekspective Podcast Network. So if you want to listen to some actual plays, I have my show Shapeshift. Um, I'm also on a show called Tales from Mox Fairy that is, we are doing Godbound, but because of the the world as it is now, we're actually um, doing remote play, and we picked up a small game of Dungeon World that we're playing probably for a little time until we can all get back together into one studio. Um, so yeah, check out my stuff, and then also please subscribe and follow Swat Hunter RPG. Um, we'll be doing this uh, Design Hinder probably for, like I said, three to four more episodes. But yeah, thanks for joining. I hope that was fun, and we will continue to build Helvetica Double Dagger Little Wheezy uh, next Thursday at 6 p.m. So thanks for watching. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for joining me and watching my process. See you next Thursday.